One thing that I haven't really mentioned thus far is that uh, aside from, you know, doing this whole YouTube gig, aside from video coaching, I also happen to be a voice actor and I've been voicing anime cartoons for, gosh, probably like maybe close to 15 years now. And in the past, I would have just gone into the studio to record, but since the pandemic, we can't really do that so much anymore. And so I had to create a booth in my house. So why don't we talk about what I use for my booth and how you can easily create a booth in as little as five minutes. Enemy number one of good sound quality is Echo. As you can see, I'm in the bathroom. The bathroom is not the place you want to record. So stay out of places with a lot of hard surfaces. I mean, this is just full of them. We've got our cabinets. Those are really hard. Sound can bounce off of those. We've got mirrors. We've got countertops. We've got hardwood floors. Lesson number one is going to be to stay away from hard surfaces. You can already tell I've gone into the bedroom from here and just the carpeting on the floor, the bed with all of the pillows and the sheets, that is absorbing a lot of sound. Your other big enemy is going to be exterior noise. So you want to stay away from windows where cars can be driving by, where dogs can be barking, where people can be outside of your window talking, which is why I find that the best place to record is my closet. And you're going to see just as I'm talking that the quality of the sound changes almost 100% because this area is filled with clothing. It is just cloth from wall to wall and all of this is going to just soak up a ton of sound. And it's also a great place because I've got great company. It's raining outside and Carson doesn't like it so he hides in the closet. So allow me to introduce you to my sound booth. So this was made with nothing but extra blankets and some towels. And then I've got this little folding chair that we had for the van that we're not using anymore. And honestly, ideally, I would rather be standing up. I feel like for me, I have more voice control when I'm standing, but I tried standing and this kind of shelf right here just was too shallow and I was at risk of my computer falling off. So this new setup is better. Uh, it's easier to leave set up because it's out of the way. And so far I like it a whole lot better than what I was doing before. So this is just the area that's underneath this shelf in my closet. I've created a little nook. I took my sweatshirts right here and I pushed them over to the side and then I did the same thing on the other side, push them aside. And then in the back, I've got this old comforter that we were just using as padding and storage. We were gonna just give it to Goodwill and I decided to keep it instead. I also have my bathrobe actually back there as another kind of layer. And I've just tried to fill in any gaps that go back to that wall back there. So like this is the bag from my chair. And I just push that in and I fill in that gap. And then I've got two Tupperwares that I've just covered with a towel to keep them from being super slick and reflecting that noise back at me. The only thing that noise should be allowed to bounce off of in this setup is my laptop. That is it. Everything else in here should be super, super soft. This is my Rode VideoMic NTG shotgun mic with my dead cat wind muff over it. This protects it from something called plosives. Plosives are when you say things with P's and B's. And if you don't have a good shield on your mic, it will actually cause a popping noise, which is not something that you want. So I've got that over the top. Uh, I've got it held in here with something that's called an articulating arm. And it's kind of this bendy arm that you can clamp into place. And that just allows me to hang it from this shelf. So I've got everything inside of here totally sound deadened. But outside of this little nook that I've created for myself, there are still some areas where sound can bounce off. This is still a fairly big closet. 
we've still got ceilings up there that are a hard surface. We've got this door that is a hard surface. So I need to trap the sound in so that there's nothing it can bounce off of. So I've brought in this blanket and I use it as a curtain and I've just got it attached up here to this rack with some carabiners. I literally just took a knife, cut a couple of holes in the blanket, stuck the carabiner through, and just attached it to that rack up there. And it works great. So when it's time to actually start recording, I just take this blanket and I wrap it around myself and I tuck it into some of the clothing beside me just to fill up any more gaps and make sure that it doesn't fall away from me and voila we're kind of in a little cocoon of sweatshirts and blankets and towels and pillows just beware it gets a little bit hot other places that i have been known to set up impromptu sound booths are armoires armoires you know, like cabinets that you put your clothing in. Uh, coat closets. One time when we were staying in a hotel room, there was no closet for me to record in at all. So I had to take all of the cushions off of the couch, I took the comforter off of the bed, and I recorded under the built-in desk. So as long as you can find someplace quiet with lots and lots of soft and fluffy cloth covered things, you're in pretty good shape for making your own sound booth. Yes, you can go out and you can buy all sorts of foams and sound deadeners. You can even go out and you can buy a booth. But if you're looking for an inexpensive, quick, easy to set up way to get good quality sound for your videos, for your podcast, heck, maybe even for a voice acting gig, everything you need is right here, ready to go in your very own bedroom. So if you have any questions, let me know down below. And if you have an alternate method for creating a sound booth, I wanna know too. This is, this is just how I like to do it. I've got links to everything that I mentioned down below in the description, and I will see you in the next one.